Bentley Hedges, a travel group here in Oklahoma, has taken plenty of trips to places around college football. Knoxville, Tennessee, went on that one. Uh, we've been to plenty of places, including this next place on the docket. What about Morgantown, West Virginia, at Poland Pixar Stadium out in Morgantown? Been there, done that great environment. They will have to experience the greatest of environments, though, in my opinion. The University of Oklahoma, Owen Field, will preview this year's version of West Virginia and what they're bringing in to Norman from Morgantown. Next, this week's football preview for West Virginia. Don't go away. James. So after the Sooners play Texas, the next game on the docket will be a home game against one of the rowdiest fan bases in college football. Possibly in the Big 12 behind Texas Tech is the Morgantown West Virginia Mountaineers. They come in to Norman this season after Oklahoma took care of business out in Morgantown last year. That team last year, the West Virginia Mountaineers, uh, who play their home games, by the way, at uh, Mellon Piscar Stadium there in Morgantown, West Virginia. Now, that team that we were talking about, the Oklahoma took care of last year, 8-4 and four in overall, 6-3 and three in Big 12 play. That was third in the Big 12 conference. And remember, they pushed the top two teams that finished above them, pushed them to the brink. Both of them. Actually beating Texas, they beat them in Austin before pushing us to our brink against uh, Oklahoma senior night in Morgantown. The Sooners, though, of course, as we all know, prevailed and advanced themselves to the Big 12 Conference Championship. They tied with Iowa State for the third place spot. Iowa State actually ended up beating West Virginia last year to finish a little bit higher in the stars. The standings are concerned in the Big 12. But with the 8-4 record, they were still invited to a bowl game where they lost to former Big East rival Syracuse. 38-14 as part of the uh, Camping World Bowl out in Orlando, Florida. After that game, this the uh, West Virginia Mountaineers had to find themselves a new coach with Dana Holgerson leaving. They looked to Neil Brown. Uh, we'll get to know him here in a second, but first, let's see what Neil actually has to work with. And at quarterback, they don't have a lot of, to work with with uh, their senior quarterback leaving the transfer from Florida uh, a couple of years ago. He's done at Florida, though, or, or in Morgantown now. So they have two new guys, Jack Allison, who actually played at West Virginia last year, played for West Virginia in seven games, passed for 312 yards last year and a touchdown. Two picks, however. His longest completion of the night of the season, by the way, 48 yards, and he averaged 50.3 in average last year for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Now, just because that Allison is returning, that doesn't mean that he's the only viable uh, quarterback 
for West Virginia. They do have quarterback Oklahoma transfer uh, Kendall, Austin Kendall, number 10 Austin Kendall. Uh, last year in reserve action behind Kyler Murray, still passed for 122 yards and a touchdown. Didn't throw an interception. His longest completion also was 48 yards, and he averaged 20.3 yards per ball game last year in just six attempts. And just six ball games for the Sooners of Oklahoma. Now rushing the ball, they have a little bit more coming back. So look for them to be heavy, heavy run to set up the passing for Allison or Kendall. And that includes uh, uh, Kennedy McCoy and uh, number 32, Martel Petway. We'll start with uh, number six, Kennedy McCoy, who at the end of last year still had 145 attempts for West Virginia on the ground. 802 yards on the ground. Eight touchdowns. His longest run, 38 yards. He averaged last year 66.8 yards per ball game in 12 games. Also in playing in all 12 games was number 32, Martel Petway. 98 uh, attempts last year to go with 623 yards on the ground. Six touches. His longest run was 55 yards, uh, averaging 51.9 average. Also, by the way, like we said, in 12 games. So that's what they have rushing the ball. But if you're going to have a quarterback that's going to be in the NFL next year, right passing, you got to have some players coming. Uh, you got, you're got you going to lose a lot of talent as far as receivers. And they did with Stills and everybody. But they still have number th uh, number uh, one, TJ Simmons, and then the aforementioned running back, number six, Kennedy McCoy, both coming back. Uh, from the receiving core. Uh, we'll start with the true receiver, number one, TJ Simmons. 28 receptions last year to go with 341 yards in the air, uh, receiving and a touchdown. His longest complete, his longest catch last, last season, 59 yards, and average, 28.4 in average, in 12 games. Also, by the way, receiving, Kennedy McCoy, the aforementioned running back, also as a receiver, had 17 receptions, 224 yards in the air, and a touchdown. His longest reception, 43 yards, averaged 30.5 in average per ball game, and 12 game attempts last season for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Now, Coach Brown also has some defense coming back. You don't know if it's going to be that kind of a 3 3 5 kind of upper brand defense or what they're going to run, but you would expect it to be pretty good with these two players returning, actually. Uh, jo Josh Norwood returns, as does uh, Giovanni Stewart. Both players, by the way, played in 12 games last year. Uh, we'll start with number four, Josh Norwood, who averaged, at the end of last season, 64 tackles per game uh, in, in the game, uh, per, in the season. Uh, also had two forced fumbles in the season, Zero fumbles recovered and zero picks from his cornerback spot in 12 games. As did Giovanni Stewart. Had 54 tackles last year in the season. Didn't have a fourth fumble. Did have a uh, fourth fumble, an interception, and a safety in 12 games last season for the West Virginia Mountaineers. So those guys are returning for West Virginia. One guy that's not returning from West Virginia... Neil Brown is the new coach in Motown. He, he is uh, a 2002 grad from the University of Massachusetts, so he knows that area. 2015 to 2018, he spent those years with the Trojans of Troy, not USC, the other Trojans of Troy, before coming to 2019 and entering his first major big-time a job in, you guessed it, West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia, with the Mountaineers. Now, uh, his coaching record, pretty good, because in 92 games over the last three years, from 2015 to 2018, he has a 35-16 and 16 record. That is a 33.1% clip in 92 games, 3-0 in his bowl attempts. 
Uh, did miss the bowl in 2015. But after that, from 2016, 17, and 18, the Troy Trojans actually averaged about 10 wins a season once that first season was done. But as far as the West Virginia Mountaineers, they don't have any division titles. Remember, in the Big East play, when they were a part of the Big East, they didn't have 12 teams. They didn't have enough teams to qualify for a conference championship game, and they really didn't have the money like Oklahoma and Texas do, as is now the Big 12, I guess you could say, to qualify for uh, even attempting to play a championship game. Now, now they can afford it with as many big-time donors like Oklahoma, like Texas, like Oklahoma State, just to name a few. They did, though, however, uh, rack up six conference championships in that Big East that we formerly mentioned, and all that fun started in 03. They got another one in 04 and 05, so that's back to back to back. Did take a year off, got back in 2017, took a little stint off, but got back to back again in 2010 and 2011 as far as conference championships. Now, in 2003, of course, as we all know, this is when Miami was Miami. So they did finish tied with Miami, but Miami ended up winning the title that year. 2004, they also tied. They tied with Pittsburgh and Boston College. Uh, oh, the three teams, Boston College, West Virginia, and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh actually won the outright title. Now, 2017, they did win the title. As Oklahoma Sooner fans should know, that was a darn good team. And they won the outright title. In uh, 27, 2007. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, they did. They won. They won uh, with UConn. West Virginia ended up winning the outright title. They ended up finishing with UConn tied again, 2010. And as most Sooner fans know, 2010 that was the year that we finally got a BCS win. They got that one over UConn in the uh, Fiesta Bowl. But West Virginia did win the invite. And then 2011. Back-to-back -back, uh, regular season titles for West Virginia. And they tied with Cincinnati and Louisville for the championship. The outright title, though, went to West Virginia. So West Virginia qualified for the BCS. All right, guys, that is it for the West Virginia Mountain Ear preview show. The next game on the docket will preview the Kansas State Wildcats in Manhattan is where we're going next. Uh, stay tuned for that next week. Till then, guys, happy you guys joined me. Uh, you can catch this and all my videos on YouTube, Boomer Sooner 1982. They're there. They're also on my Facebook channel, Harry James, uh, hey, Facebook page, I'm sorry, Harry James Taylor, or they tweet them out. I tweet them out to you. Uh, at Hype Man Harry, and you should find them there. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, Boomer Sooner, everybody. Nine forty-nine days away, baby. I can already smell all that fun in football season. All right, guys, till next week. Boomer Sooner, I'm out of here. See ya. Peace.